Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the Good Springs Ghost Tour special edition video. This is part two of this video. So um, if you haven't had a chance, go ahead and uh, look at part one if you wanted a preview of everything I've talked about beforehand before we continue here. And I've included a link for you as well. So part two continues our tour within the Good Springs Hotel. I'm um, sorry, the Good Springs Town. This one, again, we're knee deep within visiting several locations of that Good Springs location and I'll start it with an encounter that I had which is pretty hard to dismiss nothing like that's outright scared me but at least this pretty hard to dismiss because something was actually messing with my camera so let's go ahead and we'll start the pictures so this starts off we were going to a another location um, the, another cabin of sorts and on the way there I was able to take pictures of uh, he was pointing out a reported haunted spot that has to do with something that's there um, I can't remember specifically the, the, the name of the location but he was stating that this place has a lot of haunting experiences and so I was taking pictures of it just taking pictures of the grassy area the trees the shrubs that were there and then I started noticing that my camera because the way I take pictures is I take a picture I look at it then I take another picture then I look at it so it's not quick but it's not slow at the same time but I started noticing that there was my camera was starting to get a little bit wonky like it was starting to get more grayed out and then this one you'll see this picture here you'll see some streaks within it as well so it's getting more gray and then there's some streaks within it I didn't see anything of course in front of me it was still pretty dark except for the flash of my camera and other cameras that were around there as well but as far as nothing like no haze nothing like what you see from the picture now was in front of me and then boom this happened all of a sudden this when I took a picture again of that area this happened and then just in case I took another picture and then that happened again and it was surprising to me I was like what is going on what is this like what is this exactly and so I showed this to Draven and then he just nonchalantly stated oh it's because you have an orb right in front of your camera and he described that he stated that sometimes orbs they don't want to have their pictures taken like they don't want you to take pictures of themselves or of the location you're taking a picture of so they will physically put themselves right in front of your lens like they're that smart they know that that lens is specifically for the camera itself to try to block things and as further proof then I waited a couple of seconds then I took pictures again and then it became clear and then just in case thinking to myself okay maybe it was the glare from the ground there's a lot of stones within the ground they have like glassy surfaces sometimes within them maybe that'll explain it I took a picture of that uh, ground and nothing shows as you've seen and then I took more pictures of the very same areas the very same shrub and nothing shows there as well so that was pretty neat pretty nifty I had no idea how I can explain this away there's nothing in terms of, and I'll bring back the picture again there's nothing in terms of any light hitting my area there's nothing in terms of of let's say uh, anything reflecting uh, from the background even or from the sides that would be able to do so I mean there's just an extreme brightness that seems to come straight to my camera and then that's it so that was really really interesting and that was phenomenally here just right out of the blue from Draven that yes um, it happened to others as well in the past and it's simply an orb that is blocking my location so that was pretty cool now continuing the tour we walked to another area another cabin of sorts another one that was again built during that same time period and he stated this was an important stop because there's a girl that sometime is seen within that that particular location like a young girl and her shadow or her form is seen running around playing around that cabin and we were he was trying to call out to it to see if maybe it could make its presence known and he would even shine a light on it because he stated that sometimes that would help bring this thing whatever it was out but no in this case we didn't see anything at least I didn't um, and if by the way if you see anything within these pictures that I maybe haven't pointed out but it looks paranormal please post them in those comments below that would be really really interesting to hear 
Now a short distance away from that location we went to a cabin that's known as Uncle Tom's Cabin. Now, the name Uncle Tom, I know that that's like more of the derogatory term and a racial term nowadays, but this guy's name truly was known as Uncle Tom. That's why it's referred to as Uncle Tom's Cabin. And we went there specifically because the way uh, Draven stated that this location, he sometimes has interactions with this being and other times not. It just depends on his mood. Apparently this ghost slash spirit is a very temperamental ghost. He does not like guys. That's why um, he much prefers the tour guide, in this case not being Draven and one of the other female guides instead. But in this case, we had a larger number of, of female tourists than usual. And Draven was stating that this gives us a good chance to see if something can be seen or heard. But yes, Uncle Tom is apparently a very picky and sometimes dangerous entity of sorts. Because Draven further stated whoever this Uncle Tom was and the way he inhabits that location now... By the way, um, they they got the name Uncle Tom because they did a spirit box, which is a device that was brought forth in this tour as well. And they brought it along, and uh, they asked what its name was, and it blurted out Uncle Tom. So that is the name that's given to it. But yes, whatever this thing is that's there, it can be in a happy mood one day, and other moods it is outright grouchy and then finally just downright evil because the way that Draven stated was sometimes and it occurred once on a tour a recent one no less he stated that there was a person who was deemed to be like him in other words um being able to sense spirits but she didn't know it like it was a younger girl uh, she he said it was an asian tourist and she did not know that she was i guess capable of being able to uh, sense spirits but when they came closer to this that's when she started say this you know she started feeling a little bit more funnier and this uncle tom saw this somehow some way and attached itself to her uh draven stated that uh, it was a pretty scary experience because this young girl suddenly her eyes kind of like rolled back and when she started talking she started talking in a more raspier male type voice and in this case uncle tom was pissed like he was mad he did not want to be disturbed during this go around that, that at least during that tour date and he stated in his voice through her that they need to get out immediately and so they immediately got out of course because uh, that was not something that 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 tour wanted to have where the, that girl was in a dangerous position but knowing all of this we still went there to try to see if uncle tom could make his presence known we, um draven even flashed a light within that location to try to see if uh it'll it'll help bring him out because apparently uncle tom doesn't like having lights shine within the cabin and he doesn't like lights uh from cameras as well me i was taking as much pictures as i can with the light because by all means you know this is an opportunity to try to capture something the closest that i got was that the phone image started to get a little bit more blurrier kind of grayish kind of like what i encountered at the beginning of this video with that other orb but it was just with one single photo and then that was it so there was nothing else but alas i did not hear anything i did not see anything um, even with the light being shined on, as far as Uncle Tom, no, there was no presence for him. There was, though, a spirit box uh, intervention that we had, and I'm going to do a separate video for that because we I, I used my phone to record this spirit box interaction slash intervention with Uncle Tom, and some stuff was captured. I can't tell exactly what was said within that spirit box session um but i'm gonna leave it up to you if uh, stuff was being said but if you can interpret it please post it in the comments but i'll make another video for that soon the next stop that we did um after this visit to uncle tom's cabin we actually had to drive a little bit further away as we went to a nearby school it's the only school i think within good springs it kind of made me think like how does this town of 200 people have a school but there it is and the way that draven stated was there's two purported haunted locations one is the first one you're looking at here which is the playground which is specifically by the tree he said that there's uh, two ghosts there's a ghost of a boy and a girl that purportedly haunt that location people can see them playing around the tree um playing i guess whatever they're doing uh 
uh, swinging, uh, I don't know, doing anything with regards to that tree. And then also the next ghost is of a teacher named, I believe it was Catherine, that used to work within that school or did, but now, of course, uh, is long dead, but, but still wants to make its presence known. They're not harmful in any way whatsoever. These ghosts are more friendly or far more than Uncle Tom was. Um, Draven stated that they just simply make their presence known some nights and others not. So in this case, I did not see or hear anything as far as these boys or girls, the ghosts that were there by that tree. Um, as far as the uh, building, the one where the teacher, Catherine, is found, it's a specific building where the windows, which you're looking at now, come out. And I think even the school turns out the light specifically for the tour, like turns them on on the inside for the tour. This tour, by the way, is well known within the town. Like the, uh, Draven stated that this town, Good Springs, has been very, very friendly to the tour. They absolutely allow it, anyone as far as the tour and the tourists to come by for that specific tour um, nobody interferes with them as long as the people are friendly and they're back to them friendly as well then things are on a cool presence so it was pretty nice to see the inside lighted up like that I took as much pictures as I could to try to see if I could capture anything as far as Catherine um, I think that was her name I'm trying to remember but there was uh, another EVP session that was done this time to try to bring out the school teacher uh, Draven stated that on a recent trip they actually saw Catherine like staring at them out of one of the windows that's why you see me taking all these pictures possible that I can of the windows themselves to try to see if there was anything that I could spot but no, alas, we did not. So there was an EVP, I'm sorry, a spirit box session, another one that was done there. It was interesting, though, is within that session, instead of getting the teacher to talk, apparently we got a guy who was the previous owner of, in this case, of... of of the tour who had recently passed away he still lingers on on these tours so that was also interesting to find out so uh, Draven was able to talk to him very very briefly um, uh, the way Draven described it is it takes a lot of effort for ghosts to talk through EV through these spirit boxes so then it's not like you can hold 10 minute conversations with them you're gonna be lucky if you get a couple of sentences and then that's it so I'm gonna do another video of that just of the EVP session separately for that so please be on the lookout for that too by the way one other interesting thing um, Throughout all this time, my EMF detector, the one with the lights, was going on and off. And then it just went on, completely on, for the entire time period that I was on that tour. So much so that it stayed on and on and on until it drained my battery. Like it was going bright on and then mid-level brightness on and then low-level brightness on and then it was off like for the entire time. So I can't quite say if there was something that was specifically following me the entire time period. Could have been, but it some whatever it was, it absolutely drained my entire battery and then I had to ask Draven for another battery and then I've turned it back on and it stayed on for a good while but then it stayed off but then it would go back on on for a long period as well so that was really really interesting another encounter that I had too not paranormal but this still scared the hell out of me so if you've ever been out in the wild have you ever heard of a coyote now you and I have heard of coyotes and we've and we've all heard of them and seen them in movies but have you ever heard of coyote in real life well now this was my first experience but this one scared me because of how close it was so imagine being out there in the pitch blackness like we were with just a couple of lights illuminating things as far as the buildings we were surrounding I'll focus on this picture here specifically to give an idea of of what I'm talking about so I was out here and then I hear a coyote and this coyote was very close by I mean we're talking like maybe a block or two away at most the way this thing sounded and it the way it was yipping and yowling like it was doing so like it was on the hunt and so immediately when I heard that I, may, I went back to the van because I don't know how quick these things are I don't know um, how they work I've heard that they are more scared of humans than we are of them I'm not taking that chance though so I decided to go back to the van rather than take pictures from a distance but that was the very first time that I heard a coyote out in a distance like that and 
and that was pretty scary, pretty spooky stuff. So anyways, that was at least an encounter that I had, but that was not paranormal, but at least it was still pretty scary to me. Now, the next uh, place that we went to, we went back to the Pioneer Saloon because we decided to reenact the infamous game that led to that guy's death, the one with the three bullet holes on the wall. And so we were trying to see if we could reenact that instance to try to bring out the ghost of that person and see if we could communicate with it. We didn't really see or hear anything this go around, although my EMF detector was going off. You'll see a picture of it here, too. And then others were going off as well. By the way, um, these EMF detectors, um, they're set for a very high frequency, like the most sensitive uh, frequency possible. There is a chance, Straven stated, that um, when you're nearby cars that are turned on, then that equipment within it will set it off as well. So there was that possibility too, but being out here in the open and with us being the only people around and only having one car, in this case the shuttle, and then having nothing in terms of the shuttle being on while we were walking. It was turned off the entire time period. Interesting story on that, too. The reason for it is because Draven stated that one of the... Uh, uh, the, the the owner of the business while he was still alive he was on a tour and on one of those dates um, they always left the car on while they were visiting buildings but they would leave the car on but with the doors open for easy access well a spirit apparently decided to play around with them and decided to slam the door shut and lock them Obviously, they don't have the remote access to do that themselves. These doors just shut themselves and lock themselves by this entity. And so ever since then, they now leave the van off, unlocked, but obviously with their keys with them to ensure that if, if anyone else tries to play around with them like that, they won't be locked out because of it but um yes so that's why there's no cars around and our, sh our shuttle slash van was completely turned off nothing interfered in other words with our my emf detector going on and off all the time but yes that card game that we played there wasn't really much um, activity with regards to that so at that point draven then gave us one more chance like he said but this is a little bit more on the riskier side more dangerous side he said there was a building that we could stop by it's a weird name I'm, I'm hoping I'm quoting it right but it's it sounds weird but it's it's like a ass were building um, I, th I have no idea what that means but I think that's the way he said it ass were building and all he said was it's yet another cabin of sorts that is very haunted but this time by a very dangerous entity so much so that he stated that uh, one of the tour guides that that was on a recent one she no longer works there because of this but they went there, and when they were there, they had another tourist that was there as well. This tourist, or was it the tour guide specifically? Actually, I think it was a tour guide specifically. That's why she no longer works there. But when they went to it, that entity that's there, which they've nicknamed Robert, decided it wasn't playing around anymore. And it decided to levitate her just a few inches off the ground. And then she just collapsed, like right on the floor. like. And everyone saw this too. Um, they were communicating with it. And then it decided it was no longer having it in terms of of any more interactions and it decided to say things to an extremely dangerous level and it personally made uh, this person levitate just a few inches off the ground and then pass out so that's when it got things you know a little dangerous and they stopped going to that building but then they started thereafter a little bit so he asked us if we wanted to go Obviously, that piqued all of our interest and we said yes I wanted to just to see if uh, it, I don't know what I was going to experience, but I wanted to see it would be something where I would regret it later on if I did not go to this place specifically. So we all decided to go ahead and this is it. This is the location, the front of it, at least me taking a picture of the inside. I have no idea what these things are that are floating in there, most likely just dust. But I decided to take more pictures of it. There's not too many that I could take because it was at this point that that Draven stated that um, to, in order to not piss off this thing any further, that we're not going to do too many pictures and spend too much time here. Instead, they're going to do a uh, EVP session, like another one of those spirit box sessions. But 
when I was in there and we started to take that session, I was like on full alert. I wanted to see if my body could sense anything because Draven stated that this thing has slapped people. Is I don't know if he has scratched people as well, but it's definitely make its presence known. Like it has pushed people to a wall. Um, this is a very very haunted place. Um, Draven stated that this guy, whoever it was, Robert, uh, the reason why he's so evil and so bad is because he was actually someone who was a big criminal and also a pedophile. Um, he had killed a young boy and a young girl and had been very gleeful about it. Like um, in past sessions, like when he was asked questions about it uh, in the spirit box, the answers that would come about, it would be just bad things like very not remorseful at all just completely boastful about the about the fact that he was so bad and so evil with his actions so we went inside and not too many brief pictures again that I could take uh, because of the experience and because of Draven stating you know it's best not to be able to take too many pictures of it but um, I did not see anything I did not hear anything I did not feel anything but that was me. Others within the tour were stating that they were feeling lightheaded and not just like, oh, I'm a little bit woozy, but no, like the way one of them would describe it was it was that lightheadedness that one gets when they're in a roller coaster, like when they're going up on the top of a hill of a roller coaster and then suddenly going down and going back up. That's what they were describing. And one of them even had to say, Draven, can we get out of here? Uh, because they were feeling that intense uh, pressure. One of the other tourists stated that while they were in there doing that EVP session that they were also feeling like in his case like his heart like his heart like it was weird like there was a pressure in his heart he stated like this was like anything he had ever feel something like in terms of somebody going inside his chest and then actually like applying pressure within his heart purposely um, so the the place there that we visited whatever this cabin was with this entity Robert we didn't stay there too long because of it so again another reason why I couldn't take too many pictures but I did take as much as I could I caught a couple of I guess I don't know if there were orbs I mean you'll see this picture here where you'll see some streaks of some sort and then there's another one where something looks like it's coming towards my camera as well but nothing really happened to me but that was the chance that I took um, with regards to whatever this thing was within the cabin uh, luckily again nothing really occurred to me but in this case it was still a great opportunity to try to see uh, what I could find this would make like the most haunted experience with an evil presence that I have been to within all of my ghost tours all of my trips that I've taken so far this year this would be the top of the top like the creme de la creme me going to a specific location with a known bad entity very very evil spirit like a poltergeist almost of some sort um, and then me not experiencing anything but others seeing others around me experience him that was pretty spooky as well so um, finally we finished off with the final portion of the tour and that was going to a cemetery in this case the uh, only cemetery that's there a working cemetery no less uh, the way Draven stated was it's still used to this day the last known grave is somewhere around 2014 or so but yeah it's uh, this was where my camera was going over time because it was just pure blackness here there was no lights nothing at all so my apologies for the lack of pictures but the reason why you see a strong focus on the flagpole is because Draven stated that for whatever reason this cemetery has a vortex and this vortex seems to be centered on this flagpole and he pointed out proof to us because he told those that had that laser gun pointer to point it at the uh, flagpole and on the bottom it reads normal temperatures like it was cold out there by the way that's another thing a Las Vegas dead of night out there in the desert it gets very cold far far cold it's almost ridiculous how it's very hot during the day but at night it gets supremely cold but either way the flagpole gave a normal indication what we would normally consider cold near the bottom of it but as he stated point the point the uh, laser towards the top and it was very interesting the people that were doing that were noticing that it was getting colder and colder and colder to the point where it was getting negative degrees towards the top of the flagpole I think it was like negative 25 degrees Celsius 
And then he stated, obviously, are we at negative 25 degrees Celsius right now? Um, was the wind making it negative 25 degrees Celsius? Um, no, it was not. I mean, it was cold, and the wind was pretty strong, but it's not like negative 25 degrees. And so that's why he was saying there's proof that for whatever reason, there's a vortex near that area, and it happens to do uh, specifically with that flag pole. Uh, so that was pretty interesting to see, but nothing in terms of any orbs or anything like that that it could capture within the cemetery. We couldn't actually go inside the cemetery because it was closed after the evening. Uh, the hours are dawn to dusk, but after that, then that's it. But that was the very final point of the phenomenal Good Springs Cemetery location. I um, hope you enjoy this video. If you have a chance, again, you're there in Las Vegas, please take the time out. Go to this tour. It is absolutely amazing. Uh, try to take as many pictures as you can. Take video. Take audio. Hopefully, you'll be able to capture some good paranormal activity. Um, but, yes, it is an amazing tour. Highly, highly recommended. So, bye, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care.